pump water out of the tap. I go and make that innovation. I will own the IP right in that innovation, although I can even tell you that I read it from your book. I will not have infringed your copyright, because copyright protects the expression of the idea, not the idea itself. How do you express it? So you can express it through books, magazines, films, photographs, culture, paintings, computer programs, uh, data corporations, and all sorts of things. I hope you are following. Now you have so many questions because corporate is one of the biggest and the most confusing. Because you're explaining, someone gets it one way, you're explaining, they get it now another way. Now then, let's get them to the right. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to stop me and I'll answer you. Yes. Yes, that's true. There is one idea I can talk about called industrial design. Okay? The reason I've not talked about it is that we are completing the regulations to protect that, and we don't want to entice people like you to come and come into our office. Say, I need protection over this, you have to blame for me losing play. But, yes, a fashion, fashion can be protected by a copyright. The trick is, I can look at your, uh, what you call it, a sketch, okay? And uh, I go and actually make the dress or shirt or whatever. Will, that, will you consider that infringing your copyright? Because copyright is the expression, the only thing that will be protected there is that paper that you have that has a sketch. So I cannot make copies of that paper that has a sketch. I have to get Authorization from you, but I can come and look at it <laughs> and I go and <laughs> Okay? That's the, the question of idea and the expression of the idea. But industrial design will protect the sketch and the actual dress. Okay? But we'll come to that um, maybe some other time when we have had the law passed. So this would be if I have a You can have a look at my shoe design, before I design the shoe, okay? Um, can you reverse the thing and after designing the shoe, you make your own drawing? Can you call that shoe? Or you can only make one product after okay. the drawing that you saw that was mine. Uh, I think what you say those was the answer there. Where do you start? Do you start by the product or the idea? I know my it will be hard for you to have a concept without even expressing it in one or the other. But I guess what you're trying to, to, to get uh, to, the best protection would be industrial property. You can't, I don't know how to think backwards that way, but my question is should then. Okay, there is another set, it's here, another type of IP called trade secrets. It's here. I was coming to this. When I had discussion on the first day with uh, Brian, he told me you guys are involved in uh, this uh, digital technology. So my presentation was very really focused in that area. But uh, I wanted to show the different types of IP in software. So one is copyright, which will protect the computer program. Okay? So as you can read there, it's source code. You know the no one that we can see. And the object code, the ones and zeros, all those are protected by copyright. Okay? Because they are considered as literary works. So Microsoft will tell you, I'm selling you this CD of Microsoft Office. 90% of the value of this CD, actually 99% of the value of this CD is copyright. The 1% is the CD software. That's the value by it. Then, if a software can cause a printer to print or generate a document, you can patent it. As long as it has a technical effect. So, an application might not necessarily get patent protection 
because it's mere extracts information and provides it in one structured way or the other. But if your application, for example, I can switch on lights with my phone, can get a patent over that application. It must have a technical one. It failed. Number three is something called a trade secret. No one knows how Google carries out its searches. They'll tell you it's an algorithm. Okay? That algorithm is a trade secret. It's a trade secret is any. Did you get that? Any and disclosed information. Any. I'll give you an example. There was a story we tell of a man. There was a, a company. It had some machinery. Machinery got a problem. They could not resolve the problem. They bring engineers, they ah, look around the machine and say, you know, replace this one. They replace. The thing doesn't work. And they will say, okay, maybe buy the whole the whole thing. But before they could buy the whole new machinery, they, they said, but there's one guy who has been in this business for a long time. Let's call him and see what he has to so he came, he said, come, they are so strong with our machine. And uh, he came, he said, oh, you be quiet. He said, run the machine. He started walking, listening, walking, <coughs> listening. Then after he said, okay, I know the problem. He said, get me a hammer. He got the hammer, tap somewhere, and say, now it's okay. He said, I'm going to send you my invoice. The machine actually worked. He went and sent them an invoice of $10,000. They said, are you serious? That guy just walked around and just got on our machine. That can't be. We cannot agree. Give me an itemized invoice. Say it, okay? Starting on the machine, $2. Knowing <laughs> where to tap, $9,998. $9, Trade secret. As long as that information gives you an advantage, one, it's secret, no one knows it. For everyone who knows it is bound not to disclose it. Two, you expend an effort in keeping it secret. So you get your publication, you put it in your suitcase, and you close it. Put it in your drawer and close it. You take that top secret. Do not touch <laughs> all these things. As long as you can show effort in keeping it secret. And thirdly, it gives you an advantage, commercial advantage. It's protected by law. You don't have to raise a big one. It has to be a secret, and that's all that is required. Mostly all businesses, that's how they operate. And that's how most of you operate. But you don't know it. For you, you know where to get the guy who can design the code that can do this thing. Then you get him to design that part. You go and see another guy who can design another part. Then when you sit in your room and compare, you know, put the whole thing together. The secret is that you know who does what, and no one, those two don't know each other. <laughs> okay? And it is important, you are laughing, but actually that's how all businesses operate. I was saying people that you go to Nagasaki market, you find people, all of them are selling mangoes. One is 1,000, the other is 2,000. Anyway, uh, what's the problem? When you try to figure out, the guy who has mangoes at 1,000, the only advantage they have over the other one is where they source the mangoes. Either it's near, okay, or it's from their relatives, but the neighbor doesn't know. So it gives me an advantage. All my mangoes will be at 1,000. Yours, even if you cut costs, over much, okay, you stop eating lunch, you know, you do everything. You cannot sell your mangoes at 1,000. But this person is selling these at 1,000. And then they will say, ah, he's using magic. There is no magic. It's <laughs> secret. <laughs> Which goes? <laughs> then um, I've also told you about trademarks that you can protect 
you are in God, the preference, Microsoft does that, Google, everyone, you have to brand even the software. Don't just put it out there. Put a signature on your mark and give it to your neighbor with your name on it. So whoever sees you, you tell them, are you exchanging the code name with this one? Okay? Because that's how you market, that's how you enter the market. When you're looking at commercialization, you need trademarks. Apart from trademarks, you are going to be part of the crowd. You will have nothing that depreciates you. Digital media. I created this uh, for a reason because uh, we all interact with uh, these digitally compressed machinery about formats, media. Audio, image, and video all are regarded as digital media if they are recorded. And we use them every day. Video games, but all these are related by IP, usually copyright. So most of you could be developing some digital media and you are protected. I've shown you from software the different types of IP that are involved. Okay? There's one challenge with digital media. I read this statistic, I could not even believe it. Over 300 hours of video are probably on YouTube per minute. 300 million hours per minute. The first thing that came to mind was, where do they keep this stuff? 300 million per minute. The reason is, it's easy to create this work. So I have my phone. I was like, ah, I see this guy talking about IP, I don't even have a clue what he's talking about. Bam, you post it online. Okay? So you post it, that number of people is easy to produce, a mobile phone, anything, you can produce this kind of work. The problem is that in that sport, there is also a like, challenge, the other side of it. It's like humans, you know? You find someone who's very bold, active. The challenge is that the other side of him is that he is. He doesn't listen, you know, it's his way or the highway, that kind of thing. So that's the same thing with digital media. Because it can be either replicated, manipulated, transformed and distributed, it's easy to deal with this work online without the realization of the owner. And most people assume, I was even watching a show where someone said that it is on the internet, therefore it must be true. You know? Most people assume that it's open and free. So you can copy and paste it in the final line. I saw an advert uh, downtown, someone was advertising their site. They had an image on their board with the word shutter stroke. <laughs> hmm? Now I told him, this guy just copied the final line, ah, who cares? Then he dumps it there. But these are your works, and I'll show you how you can protect your works online. Okay? All right, how about user generated content? Which one is this one? And this one? And this one? Who? What is that? Is that the first one? Yes. How about this one? This one? Who? Farm chat? This one? Ah, this one. Uh, whoever gets it correct, I will also give it to my soda. Which one is this one? Eh? It's, yeah, it's the third from the... Is that the right? The third? The right. It's the third from the right. Which one is it? Yes, genius. Yeah, I love you. Yes, it's Chinese. Is that this one? And the last one? All right. So how many of you are on any of those uh, uh, social media things? Okay. How many are on none of those things? <laughs> well, she has raised her hand. You need me to verify you because you don't want to ask. But almost every individual on planet Earth is involved in one of these things. The uniqueness about uh, this social media is that almost all the content 
is by us, the users. You see how interesting it is? And another statistic that was also <laughs> ridiculous. Every day, there are 300 million tweets sent. Every single day. That's just 14 characters. 300 of them, people really have time. <laughs> so who owns this content? What's your, what's your answer? Don't worry. What, what's your answer? What do you think? Because I'll show you something. Who owns it? Which one are you on, by the way? <laughs> Which one? Maybe only in chat. You are not of them except maybe we chat Chinese. Yes. Hmm? yes. Okay. So who owns the content that you put up on those sites? Is it you? Yes. Hmm? I think I own it. I think. You think you own it? Okay. Who thinks uh it's a mix of both? A mix of both. I'll tell you what, so if if let's say you tweet about something. Yes. And if government doesn't like it, Twitter can delete that tweet. Okay. So if you paste a link to the white paper or the first paper, yes. that is the paper that you own by you. But sir. But the government can still take away your side paper if you are publishing about guns. <laughs> so who owns it? Who thinks it's not you, it is someone else? Okay. I don't know the answer. Hmm? So I'll assume all of these things. The things you post there are yours. Remember what I said? You are the author, you are the one who pays copyright protection, okay? All right. Here, you don't, and this is the interesting thing. None of you on Facebook, how many of you on Facebook? Okay, how many of you are on Facebook? Yes. Yes, her, myself, and him. So, if you're on Facebook, everything you post on Facebook, you don't own it. You remember when you were saying in dinner, they said, you know, some people are afraid, great, they are accepted, you remember that time? Yes. So when you say, I agree, this is what you're doing too. That's his friend. You man, you are, you are, your girlfriend ignores you alone. Can you, on a scale of one, tell, tell me how he ignores you? He said, like terms and conditions. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. This is on the terms and conditions for joining Facebook. And this one I want to give you today. Sharing your content and information on Facebook, you own. Now this is the tree. You own all the content and information. Who said uh, the audit and someone owns it? You own all the information you post on Facebook. You can control how it is shared through your privacy and application settings. In addition, there's something there. For the content that is covered by intellectual property rights. Okay? okay. I told you which content is covered by IP. They give examples, for example, like photos and videos. You specifically, this is what you specifically need. Specific, you are very specific when you accept it. Give us the all information subject to your privacy and application settings. You grant us a non exclusive license, transferable, sub licensable, royalty free, or worldwide license. Use any IP content that you post on or in connection with Facebook. See that? So, remember the value of your information is in your IP. Hmm? They say, yes, whatever you post on mine is yours. But the value is us. We use it however we want. Subject of the to privacy. Settings. So they can get your picture and use it. When you say, that's my picture, they should tell me, I said, ah, remember, you specifically. Yeah, but. <laughs> so, whenever you see terms and conditions, take time to read the 100 pages. <laughs> All right. So this is who owns what you post online. If you have a website, you need to add it there. You can just add a line at the bottom. 
that terms and conditions apply. If you're interested, ask, you put a link. No one is going to go there. I can assure you. Except people like me doing research.